options. What's a simple way to remember the Greeks? The Greeks tell us how an options price reacts to various factors. An options price is not just made up of the underlying security, so it's called a derivative for a reason. It is derived from the underlying security, which can be stock, ETF, fixed income products, commodities, so many things, but time and implied volatility are a component of it. And so what the Greeks tell us is the changes of those components, how does it adjust the price of an options premium? Delta just tells you if the stock the underlying security moves up or down by $1, what does the premium change to? That's your destination. So an option at the end of its expiration is either going to be in the money or out of the money. It's gonna be worth something or it's not. It's gonna have some executable value or not, which means it's gonna have a delta of one or zero. A delta of one means that it is acting like 100 shares of the stock, acts like the stock, it's trying to mimic the stock. Delta of zero means it's just completely out of the money. Your destination is one though, if you're buying options. Theta is time. so that that tells you how much the premium will decay, the options price, as the option expires each day. Theta is not linear, so as the option nears expiration, it kind of like just falls off the cliff and because the option has time value associated with it. So the more time you have until expiration, the more expensive it's going to be because it's the more time that it is to have actually have executable value because the goal is executable value. So theta is just your daily time decay. Gamma is like the engine of your option. It is a derivative of a derivative. Gamma's job is to get delta to either zero or one, which just means does the option have value or not? Delta tells you what the new premium is going to be. Gamma tells you what the new delta is going to be. So you want a good engine. So a higher gamma means you've got like a Maserati, which is normally around at the money options. They have a higher acceleration. They're more likely to be in the money. Whereas if you have a zero gamma or a very, very low gamma, you're on a bicycle. It's going to take you a while to get to your destination. Destination, which is why gamma is centered around at the money options and it's like zero when you're really far out of the money. But it's also zero when you're really in the money because it's already done its job. So if it's really far away from the money, it doesn't have executable value. Gamma is really low because you're at a bicycle and you need to get to your destination. And that's why it's difficult to make money with those out of the money options. Where you're centered around at the money options, you have a higher gamma generally. That's what you want to look for if you're being directional. That will get you to in the money. But once it gets there, gamma goes away. And we call that the delta, the gamma and theta trade off as Vega tells you the, uh, it's another derivative of a derivative, but it's your exposure for volatility. So you want to be net long Vega if you are long, essentially. So long options are always positive Vega, but it tells you as implied volatility moves up the change in your options premium. And if the options premium goes up in value, that's good if you're buying, whereas if it goes down in value, that's good when it's selling. And the purpose of the Greeks is it helps you give optimal entry and exit points. Like I wanna know if volatility is high, so I wanna have a net short Vega option because then that means if volatility contracts, I'm gonna make money. Options involve risk and are not for everyone. See the OCC disclosure document. My day job, I work for a company called Options Play. You can actually go on our YouTube channel and there's a 30 minute video on the Greeks that you can watch.